This is Corey Bauer, Application Engineer with Go Engineer, and this session is going to be on casting and molding from our Shape Your World events. Click to Cast is a software made by Solid Thinking, and it analyzes the casting process of metals. With five easy steps, we can create our analysis. We open the geometry, we define the end gate and the mesh, we set up the process parameters, we run the calculation, and then we analyze the results. For this project, we are going to analyze a control arm for a remote controlled car. We are going to inject the metal from the small end, and we are going to use aluminum. After the analysis is completed, we can look at results like the flow front, the temperature, the cold shuts, and the velocity vectors. For plastic part analysis, we use SOLIDWORKS Plastics, and it has six easy steps. We create the mesh, we define the polymer, we define the fill settings, we define the injection locations, we run the calculation, and we analyze the results. For this project, we are looking at the strut mount. We are going to use ABS plastic from the standard material library. We're going to inject the plastic on the middle upper side of the part. And the results we get will be fill time, velocity, vectors, and sink marks. The first step of our analysis is to import the geometry. So we just start a new project, pick the STL that we want to use, click to cast will process that file. The setup is wizard based, so all we have to do is click next. Now we want to define our end gate, which is where the metal will be poured into the mold. And we want to use the advanced option. That way we can choose between a rectangular end gate and a circular end gate. We want a circular end gate with a radius of 2 millimeters. We want to inject into the small end of the control arm. So that is in the XY plane. So we make sure our orientation is set to XY. We want to add our end gate. We just select on the geometry where we want that end gate located. If we wanted multiple end gates, we just continue to select on the geometry. We're only using one, so we can move to the mesh step. We're going to use one millimeter for the mesh, and then we hit create. Now that the mesh is generated, we can see if the mesh size is sufficient to represent the geometry, and in this case it is. So we'll hit next to continue on through the wizard. The next step is to choose the group of material that we want to use. Uh, we want this to be aluminum, and then we've got a few different types of aluminum that we can use. We're just going to use the first one in the list. It defaults to the appropriate temperature. The next step is we choose what our mold material is. We're just going to pick steel. Also defaults to the correct mold temperature. We define the direction of gravity, and then we define how we want to inject the metal. And we're going to use a velocity. And then the last step is to choose whether we are doing just a filling or a filling and solidification. Once the calculation is completed, the first thing we want to see is how the part fills. So we just want to look at the flow front, and then we want to animate how it fills.
once we have seen that the part completely fills, we want to look at some of the other results. We might want to see what the temperature at the end of the casting process is. We also want data on the flow vectors with velocities. We can look at our cold shuts, which is where two flow fronts come together. We could also look for areas that air is being trapped in. We also want to look for areas that might have mold erosion. We can then look at how much time it takes to fill this mold. We can also see the pressure at the end of the fill. The first step of creating an analysis for injection molding is to create the mesh. When we're creating the mesh, we have an option of solid elements or shell elements. Uh, solid elements will give better results. Shell elements will solve faster. We're going to use the shell element, but we want to manually define the mesh. The next step is to define the size of the mesh. We'll leave it at the default size, but we do want it to automatically refine the mesh in some of the small geometry areas, and then we'll let it mesh. We can see that it refined the mesh around some of the holes and bosses to better define the geometry. And then we'll just hit next in the wizard. Gives us a summary of the mesh that it created, and we'll OK that. Once the mesh is created, we get the rest of the study tree. The next thing we needed to define is what polymer we want to inject. So we just open up the database. We can filter the plastics by their family or by the company that manufactures the plastic. We are going to use our generic ABS. So we just expand the ABS family and make sure that we choose generic ABS. We've got the viscosity curves, and we've also got the um, polymer material properties. So the melt temperature, the mold temperature, um, injection temperature, glass transition temperature. If the material we need is not in the database, we can create that. After we've defined our polymer, we next want to set the fill settings. So we can define the fill time. We can define the melt temperature, which defaults based on the material. But if we want to adjust that, we can. We also define the mold temperature which is defaulted by the material. And then we define the pressure limit of our injection molding machine. The next step is to create our injection location. We can either manually select on the geometry where we want our injection location, or we can have the software tell us based on the number of locations we want. So if we wanted one location, this is where it suggests that we add that location. If we want to fine tune that a little bit, maybe we want to go on that face, we can add the location. Once we've got our injection location, we are ready to run the analysis. Once the analysis is completed, we can look at the results. The first result we want to look at is fill time. This will tell us whether the mold fills completely or if we have a short shot. We can see everything fills completely, so we can look at some of the other results. Another good option is to show where the weld lines are, and that is where flow fronts come together. We also want to look at where we have any air traps. So every place that we have a purple sphere is a potential air trap area. 
we also might want to look at our pressure at the end of the fill. It's also important to know the temperature at the end of the fill. To help predict any warpage, we can look at shear stress at the end of the fill. So if there are areas with higher stress, we might predict that warpage will occur. We can also look at volumetric shrinkage to see how much we need to scale our part up. That way it shrinks to the correct size. Another thing we want to look at is where we may have sink marks. This has been Casting and Molding with Corey Bauer, Application Engineer at Go Engineer. Mm -hmm.